and we're back what's going on guys it's basilia 12 here come with you with another video um i'm going to cover how to hog cycle right now uh very common uh deck it's i'm going to be covering the 2.6 uh very popular hog cycle with the musketeer hog you can see here uh you can swap poison with fireball uh that that, that also works uh, I'm using poison right now because where I'm at, the a very popular uh, counter to the hog cycle is uh, skeleton army, skeletons, uh, or even musketeer wizard. Uh, I believe that I, I use poison instead of uh, fireball because it does damage over time. So while the wizard or musketeer is in the poison shooting at it, it will be taken out as well. It's also just a more f fun card to use. So the object of Hog Cycle is to outcycle your opponent's counters. So normally in a deck you'll have one to two counters. You'll have a main counter to a card and you'll have a secondary counter to the card. Secondary counter to the card is usually not that good. You'll take a bit of damage. For example, in this deck, if I was facing a Hog Cycle deck, uh, my main counter to their Hog uh, well their hog ice golem push would be a cannon placement right here I would uh, place the cannon a little bit higher uh, more closer towards the, the bridge and towards the middle so it will draw away so the ice golem will continue towards the tower and the hog and it will just shoot at the hog That that's one way to pull it you can work with the classic 4-3 placement but it will start shooting the ice golem first. Uh, I, I want I want to start getting at the hog as soon as possible. And if they are doing that, then you can always do a free uh, drop an ice spirit to help slow things down. A very if you feel a little uncomfortable and you don't and you feel like your cam placement is a little too close to the tower, what you can do is drop some skeletons on the hog to help it out. So that's still a that's an even trade. For the most part, if you place your cannon right, it'll be a 3-4 trade almost every time. So we're going to jump into some replays. Uh, I'm sort of, I've sort of hit a wall uh, because of my card levels. And as you can see, this is basically the deck I'm rocking right now. I'm losing against um, other people who have high level cards, well higher level cards than me. And at, at, in these lower in these lower arenas, it sort of makes a quite a big difference uh, when your cards are not at tournament level, which mine are sort of close. Um, I'm trying to get the hog there. I don't, the only card in this deck that's at tournament level is Zap, uh, which which is nice. But also, uh, a lot of people don't have the uh, that I run into don't have well a skeleton army. Their skeletons are not level nine, so it won't take out. Uh, so it'll. Poison, level 3 poison will take out level 8 skeletons and blow instantly. So we're going to jump into uh, a couple uh, replays right now. This is against a golem deck. Uh, as you can see, he has the skeleton army. I believe I may have poisoned it. Uh, I, I think I also zapped it once. But we're going we're gonna to jump right into it. So right here I have a starting hand. Uh, I, I see that the hog's next in my cycle. So... I decide to sort of get on him quick and initiate a response just to see what his counter is to my card. I have a zap ready. Um, I zap that. Uh, not a good play. Uh, usually I, I zap the uh, skeletons because my ice comb is not a high enough level right now to take out the skeletons uh, on his on, upon his death damage. So I get some I get some good damage right there. I'm also at an elixir advantage. I spent six elixir. Well, actually no. I spent four for the hog, two for the zap, two for the ice golem, so I spent eight. But he spent five on Inferno, three on Skeleton Army. So he, we spent about the same, but I'm on Elixir Advantage because I played my cards first, and he was uh, creating what I call he's leaking. He was leaking Elixir at first. So I do a cam placement right here to deal with uh, the. I dropped the Ice Spirit right there more to cycle so I could uh, get my Ice Golem out to protect my Musketeer. This Valk is going to do a lot of damage because I couldn't address uh, both sides. But it's, it's not that big of a deal. As you can see, uh, I'm, at, I'm, I'm, at, I'm in a 
pretty good lead right now. He is a level eight, so I will I will give that to him. Uh, cause right now he he's done he's done quite a bit of damage on my left tower, but I've I've done about half damage to his right tower and to his left tower a little more. So right now I'm gonna start a musketeer in the back, start a slow musketeer push. The nice thing about this deck though is that you can put a lot of cards on the table and sort of get through your entire cycle and be able to also have your entire cycle ready for the for uh, to deal with your counter push. I zap here again. Um, I probably should have poisoned looking at hindsight, but I didn't think I was I th was expecting a big push, so I was starting to save up some elixir. This bomber, I'm just gonna. I believe I surround with skeletons. <laughs> so he has he drops golem. And that means he dropped. He just committed eight elixir. So I immediately push the other lane to make him commit some elixir on the other side. Uh, more t more so uh, to split up his push so he can't build up a really big golem push because this, this deck does not do super well uh, against beatdown if you let them build up a push which is all what beatdown is about so I'm already back to my hog I'm dropping another hog on him I drop ice spirit he's, he's dropping inferno uh, it's not it's just gonna delay the inevitable and I poison right here to get some extra damage and that is good game right there So this is a this is another replay. This was against uh, another golem deck. I've been facing quite a bit. There's a, there's a lot of um, elite barbs, golem, valk. <coughs> sort sort of uh, a lot of people will do these valk uh, valk elite barb pushes, which are really difficult to deal with because I do not have high enough card levels to really deal with it. They'll just annihilate my cards before I can. Uh, really take it out. If this was like on a even level playing field, I would have done a lot better. But this is the three crown. Uh, this is not a three crown deck. Uh, you'll see why I three crowned him. But this is more of a one crown deck, and you have to get the lead early because this because of its uh, low cost, it does really well. Uh, it does really well when it's not double elixir because you can cycle it uh, quicker than they can cycle to their counters. So I'm trying to split it up. I, I Spear is a little too far to the left. So I'm taking some damage right here. I actually take a lot of damage uh, from that elite bar because my uh, tower was shooting at the Valkyrie. So right now I'm, I'm behind quite a bit, but I'm still pretty confident because uh, I know he's rocking an expensive deck. And when he's rocking an expensive deck, I know when he drops a lot of elixir, I can go in for a punish. So right here we're about even, and I'm poisoning. He sort of gave me uh, drop some uh, BM, so BM matters, because he missed the tornado. Uh, I'm not sure if I do. I'm usually pretty good about. Uh, yeah, I'm usually pretty good about that. Uh, I only I only really do this on my lower account. On my upper account, I usually would. If they drop a taunt right off, um, I just mute them. It's not its not like I don't want to listen to them. It, it's more of just it helps me focus. So right right, right there, I saw him drop a mirror fireball. Uh, and you can tell by the way I was spaced out that he was low on elixir. He was waiting for uh, him to have enough elixir so that he could... Uh, mirror, so he fireball again. If not, he would have just fireballed. He would have fireballed, been a second pause after the pushback, and then fireballed again. If he had the elixir. So right there, I capitalized on his. Uh, I, I capitalized on his response to go basically zero elixir. I would not recommend that. When you're, well, in any deck really, I would not over. I would not overcommit your elixir. And what I mean by that is putting too much into a push because that leaves you very vulnerable to a counter push. The only time I would really recommend putting more elixir into a push is if they're also if the other person is also putting a lot of elixir. So let's say you put 12 elixir into a push. Uh, and they put 12 elixir into stopping it. 
there. I still I see her even. You kind of you 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 overcommitted, but then he also overcommitted on um, defense. So I would see it's justifiable there. But generally, you want to make positive elixir trades. Uh, that's a three crown right there. He gave up after I believe I punished him. I'm not sure if he lost connection or if he just gave up. At this level, I'm I'm just sort of taking it because I need I need my crowns. I need wins. Got to get that gold. <laughs> I can, I only have 33 right now. Because this is a completely free to play account, and my recommendation if you're free to play, just get just focus on one deck and just level that deck up. People will say yes, your deck you're you're completely over leveled for your level. I'm actually under leveled right now. I just had to get to level nine so I can get that tournament standard uh, king tower and uh, princess tower so that my towers aren't doing are actually doing a little bit of damage to their troops. Because I believe I was a level seven in Frozen Peak. Actually, I think I was like a level 6 or 7 in Frozen Peak. And I believe I was also a level 7 in Jungle Arena. And I'm facing level 7 and 8 rares. And I'm facing level 9 and 10 uh, commons. Also sometimes level 11. And my archer and my, and my towers were not doing a lot of damage. They were barely taking it out. And my cards were under leveled. So I was just taking so much damage. Uh, so this is sort of the deck I'm rocking on this account right now. Um, it's a solid deck. If you do not have um, a high a high enough level musketeer, so if your musketeer is constantly dying to fireball, I would not recommend this variation of the deck because then your only uh, win condition at that point is your hog, which is good, but you kind of want that secondary. Uh, this is more of a support card. Uh, syner the synergies in this deck are the Hog Rider, Ice Spirit, um, Ice Golem, very, uh, it's, it's a very solid deck all around. Like, and also, if you want to check your deck, uh, there's this website. Uh, there we go, Deck Shop Pro. So this is, well, this was me checking um, a deck that I was rocking on my higher level account. But let's say you want to check your deck. See what arena you're in. Um, I'm arena nine, I guess. Cards you don't have. I'm not gonna waste my time with that right now because I don't have a lot of cards. So right now I'm gonna create the deck. We got cannon, ice golem, hog, musketeer. There's poison, poison, and zap. There we go. You could also substitute Zap for Log. Um, that's that's if you have the legendary. This is a no legendary deck. Then you check the deck. It tells you um, that's with a grain of salt, but it will tell you your shortest cycle. This, these are very good things. Um, it'll also tell you your synergies, uh, what cards counter um, all the cards uh, in the deck. Well, all the cards that you constantly counter. So uh, if you're facing a certain card over and over. Like let's say you're facing Royal Giant, um, I would really focus on what cards can counter the Royal Giant, and more build your deck around that. Uh, this is a very good deck. It counters it counters a lot of stuff, um, but also if so, if you're facing someone who knows who really knows what they're doing with a, another with like let's say a beat down deck or a chip deck, you could have a lot of problems. Uh, Against this will this will do well against beat down. You have to get an early lead, uh, because beat down is all about double elixir. You got you got to hit them hard. You got to um, get a, a one tower lead um, before double elixir, and also uh, be able to have quite a quite a I wouldn't say a lot of damage, but a little bit of damage. Maybe like five, maybe like four or five uh, hog hits on the other tower so that you could survive. And then at that point, you're cycling your cards. You got to get Musketeer and back, cannon for Golem. And if you cycle fast enough, you can get to another cannon while the other cannon's still up and sort of lead them away as you saw I was doing it. So my next deck archetype that I'm going to cover is going to be uh, bait decks. That's going to be for a different video. So I'm doing, I'm going to be doing a giveaway uh, this week. It will be open, I believe, on Friday. Uh, stay tuned for more details, but all you have to do is uh, subscribe. Uh, you can like the video if you want, and enter in the comments whether you are on, uh, if you, whether you want iTunes or Google Play. Uh, it's gonna be a $10 gift card. Uh, it's more of a thank you. Uh, and 
stay tuned for more details, and that'll be the end of the video. This is Basilia signing off, and I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.